when it comes to problems with interest, there are two distinct equations you have to know. The first one is for simple interest. And that equation is that the amount of interest you earn is equal to the principal invested times the interest rate times the time or length invested. Both your interest rate and your time should use the same unit of measure, meaning that if your interest rate is described in years, say they give you an interest rate of 6% per year, then your time should also be described in years. So if the problem in this case said six months, you would want to describe six months as one half a year. The equation for compound interest is the amount of money you earn is equal to the principal invested times one plus the interest rate, parentheses, and then that is raised to the number of times the interest rate is compounded. Just like in simple interest, the number of times it's compounded and the interest rate should be described using the same unit of measure. So if we had a count that was paying 6% per year, but it was compounding every six months, and we kept the money for one year, we would want to write the yearly interest rate in terms of six months. So instead of calling it 6% per year, we would call it 3% per six months. And then within the one year we were keeping the money in the account, we would calculate the interest two times in that year. So our n would be equal to two. So in this compound interest equation, if we initially invested $100, our equation would be the amount we earn is equal to $100 times one plus 0 0.03 squared. This problem, like most interest problems, simply comes down to recognizing which formula to use and then plugging in the numbers. The problem tells us we're using simple interest. So the equation we're using is the amount we earn is equal to the principal invested times the interest rate times time. Or in this case, we have $20,000 at a rate of 6%, which I'm going to write as 6 over 100 times the time of three years. Dividing by 100 cancels out two of the zeros in 20,000, and six times three I can write as 18. Or the amount of interest we earn is going to be equal to 200 times 18. Two times 18, that's 36, and then I'm going to add on the extra two zeros. So the total interest earned is $3,600. So here's a very similar problem, but this time they're asking for compounded interest. So I'm going to use the equation that the amount I earn is equal to my principal invested times one plus my interest rate raised to the power of the number of times my interest is compounded. Or in this case, I have a principal of $6,000 times one plus 20% or 0 0.20 raised to the power of three for the three years that the money is invested and compounded annually. If I have a calculator, then figuring out one plus 0.2 cubed won't be a problem. But if I don't have a calculator, I might have an easier time calculating this as a fraction. I can write 0.2 as 1 fifth, and then I'm gonna add one to it, or five over five. So one plus 0.2 is the same thing as six fifths and then I cube both the top and the bottom of my fraction. And I'm left with 216 over 125. So my new equation is the amount I earn is equal to 6,000 times 216 over 125. I know 125 goes into 1,000 eight times. So I could rewrite my fraction, canceling out my 125, and replace the three zeros with an eight. Now my amount is equal to six times eight, which is 48, times 216. Once we're to this point, with a multiple choice test, it's probably gonna be good enough to estimate. So I'm gonna rewrite this as 50 times 200. Or I can estimate my final amount is somewhere around 10,000. Here's a problem where I have information about two separate accounts earning two different kinds of interest. If they don't specify that it's compound interest, we can assume we're using simple interest. 
So our equation is the interest we earn is going to be equal to the principal invested times the interest rate times the time. In this equation we have one account that earns 5% and one account that earns 7%. I'll call the amount invested at 5%, I'll call that account A, and the amount at 7%, we'll call that B. So in account A, I invest A amount at a rate of 5% for a period of one year. In account B, I'm going to invest B amount multiplied by 7%, again for a period of one year. So the interest I earn in the B account is 0 0.07 times the amount invested, and the amount in A is 0 0.05 times the amount invested. And then they tell me the interest I earn is a total of $72. So now I can write two equations. My first equation is that 0.05A plus 0.07B, that's going to equal $72. They also tell me the total amount I invested was 1200 So that means the amount I invested in A plus the amount I invested in B is equal to 1200 Since I don't like decimals, I'm going to take my top equation and multiply everything by 100. And then I can rewrite that as 5A plus 7B, that's equal to 7200. Now the question is asking me how much I invested at 5%, or they want to know how much was invested in account A. Since I'm eventually solving for A, I first want to solve for B and then use substitution. So using my top equation and solving for B, I can subtract A from both sides. And I can write the equation that B is equal to 1200 minus A. Then I can take that definition of B and plug it into my other equation. So now my equation is 5a plus 7b, which is 1200 minus a, that's equal to 7200. Or 5a plus 8400 minus 7a is equal to 7200. I combine my a's and subtract 8400 from both sides, and I get negative 2a is equal to negative 1200, or A is equal to 600.